Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular DIY. Erica Sints are at it again. They've decided to do more of their wonderfully educational DIY modules and have thrown in at me to have a bit of a go. This is what we have so far. Up to this point, a fabulous case full of fabulous modules that's been, it was an awesome experience of putting all of these together. It was about one a month we did uh, over the course of many, many months and we worked through it, learnt a heck of a lot about circuit design and put the whole thing together. It's a beautiful thing. I imagine if they're releasing more modules, they're gonna to have to come up uh, with another case or the same case twice, I suppose. The first in this new range is a compressor, a compressor with a side chain is interesting side chaining is is really interesting within modular because it's a way of kind of sucking away the bulk of your signal to allow a kick drum or something of that nature to come through while a compressor itself can be used for beefing up anything anything at all that you want to squash the dynamic range of and just kind of either put forward in the mix but we'll get to what it does later for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to build the thing from the kit. This is not the long and drawn out investigation into how these things work and all the circuit business. I will be doing that in a live stream at another point. This is purely the building of the module itself, just so that there's a video out there that will help you do that. And so at this stage, I don't have all the wonderful documentation that Moritz Klein produces for these modules. I don't have that, I just have the build guide. So that's what I'm going to follow. So let's have a look at see what we have in the kit. There's the front panel. We have an audio in, side chain input, input gain knob, makeup, some LEDs going to go in there, a threshold and ratio, attack release, and then an attack and an audio output. On the bottom is the PCB packed in there as normal. All of the resistors, I believe, are going to be. Uh, vertically mounted. Cool. I have a bunch of knobs and sockets. A single switch. Ah, that must be what the attack is for. Down the bottom, I have some chips and chip holders. I've got a whole bunch of resistors. Transistors diodes and stuff. As I have no bit of materials at this stage I'm going to be uh, measuring my resistors to make sure we've got all of those right. But we will be discovering, we'll be discovering the contents of this kit as we go I think is going to be the plan. <laughs> does this feel like I'm doing this by the seat of my pants? It does. It does from my perspective. Right so we've got some ceramic, oh, capacitors, a nice bunch of LEDs, a couple of big fat ones, and those square ones there. Good, I think. I think we're good to go. So the way this is going to work, I'm not going to do it live in real time all the way through. I will have a look at the, the bit that we're going to do, and then we'll drop into some kind of speeded up time-lapse version of the actual soldering. But I'll, I'll try for each section, just to go through each section of the build guide, because this does take us through rather nicely. And then just talk about that bit, do the first bit, and then spin into the speed up, and then get to the next section, and I'll talk to camera again. That's the general general plan, but then here we are at the beginning. Who knows what might happen in between? And hopefully at the end, we'll get to the point of being able to test the whole thing out. That would be good. So, the, the build guide comes with this rather nice... A layout here that you can print and that's going to give you a lot of information about where to put everything. It has all of the uh, resistor part numbers on and capacitor part numbers, the screen print and it does tell you essentially what they are both by value and by number. So that is going to be our point of reference. We also have these wonderful photographs that come in as we go along that we can follow which will show us exactly where all the different bits go. So through the combination of those guides within the build guide, we shouldn't have any trouble. So I have my soldering iron heated up. I have my safety specs in place. I have my magnifying what's it, just in, in case I need that because 
and my eyes. My eyes! And I think we're pretty much ready to go. So let me create a little bit of space. Down here. This is what we need to be doing. So the general idea is to start with the lowest things first. Because the resistors are being mounted that way, then the lowest things are actually the diodes, which are these fellas here. Now it does also talk about protection diodes. Those are usually bigger, but I seem to only have this lot. So let's go to this diagram here and see if they are all the same. They are all 1N4148 all the way along here. Oh no, there's two at the top which are different. Two at the top which are different. I don't appear to have those. Wait, stand by. No, I found them. See, I knew it. I knew it. You see, I have learned things from doing the whole other range of uh, educational modules. I have learned that this these, these are the diodes you use for circuit protection as opposed to the little weeny ones. These are the slightly fatter ones. These are the uh, 1N5819s. Yeah, and they are certainly that little bit different to the, uh, what you call them, 414148s. Does anything see any difference? Difference. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to pop back to the picture until I get myself into the swing of things. So yes, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, good. So using our diagram, we can see that these two go into the top end. Now on the PCB itself, everything is written in values. So as far as actually populating the board, it's going to be relatively easy because you can see exactly what the component is printed on the board itself. However, without a bit of materials, I don't know what any of my components are. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research by going on clues that are on the side of it and, and things like that. But this is definitely the 5819. It is written around the barrel of it. And for diodes, it's got the line on the screen print that refers to the line on that refers to the line on the diode itself because these absolutely have to go the right way around. The whole purpose of a diode is that it only allows flow in one direction. And they go in opposite directions. Like so. For all the other ones, these ones go into all the other spaces up and down here. You've got some there, down here, a whole row of them at the bottom, bunch in there. Let's go. <laughs> Making a right mess of that. So starting, starting at the top of the board. seem to meet up here for the first time so again make sure that that line on the diode goes the right way around and that can go in there Do I have any left? I do not. So that must be that then. Just checking the board for any others. No oh, good. So let's get to the soldering. So for this I turn on a little bit of air that's coming across here to move the stuff out of the way. We'll also be careful about very lightweight components that they don't just disappear. And in terms of soldering, I pick on one. I heat up the pad, I heat up the leg, give it a moment, give it some solder, and it's done. Yeah, just, just like that. So I'll do the other one while I'm here. Just excellent. 
this is going to take hopefully no time at all so i'm going to get on with that i'll see you on the other side There we go. We're just beautifully even, perfectly placed. <laughs> Glorious diode. So what's next? Right, well next I want to do the dip sockets or the IC holders, whatever you want to call them, which are these fellas here. They just drop beautifully onto the board. All you've got to think about is orientating the, the little nick on that with the one that's printed on the PCB. Now this one faces seems to face that way north whereas these other two seem to face downwards. Like so. Now, of course, the thing is that when you turn this over to solder it, they all fall out, which is not awesome. So you're going to have to put something over the top. You can take them down. You can use blue tack. I tend to either just fudge it <laughs> by sort of holding them and then trying to get it over without them falling out. I think I did. I think I got it. I think I, yeah, no, no, I won that one. Uh, or I place something on top and turn it over, that sort of thing. So that'll do. So what I do to start these off is I just do one leg to so go for the square one. Just hold the whole thing down, apply a bit of pressure with your soldering iron and then solder that one leg. And I try to keep it straight as you remove the soldering iron. Oops. <laughs> and hopefully that's going to have taken now I'm going to do the same here. Now the reason that we're doing this is so that we can check it to make sure that it's flat and straight before we solder all the legs in because that's going to enable us to very easily fix it if it's not straight. So we turn it over, have a look, that looks pretty good to me. But if it was all over the place and I've only got one leg to desolder making it much easier to take that out and to put it back in again yeah you get me good right i will solder the rest and i'll see you for the next bit all done all good next bit ceramic capacitors that refers to these these fellas here um i wonder if there's one type or two types let's have a look 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, <laughs> 0 0.1. Let's have a look. So that should be a 104. Are they all the same? 104, 104. Now I've got a slightly smaller one here, which is 681, something different. Okay, so I've got to look out for the different one, which will be on the board here somewhere. So let's start again at the top got a 0 0.1 there now 0 0.1 are the 104s the infamous 104s now these are not polarized you can put them any way around you like slap them in pull the legs out a little bit so they don't fall back out one there one there is a 0 0.1 12 is a 0 0.1 one more now you see that says 0 0.1 for the C7. So where does this one go? Ah, in between C13. So here. See in between these two diodes, there's a capacitor, 680 picofarads, which is what this is. This is that one. 
So this is the different one, the short one that goes in between there. Great. So same deal again. I'll uh, solder them all in and see you after. together so next up is the resistors now in order to save space as they say they have mounted all of the resistors in kind of this way so rather than doing them like the other components you do them like this so they stand up which is a cool way of saving space if slightly more annoying <laughs> to put in but I've got all of these resistors and I've got to have to find out first of all what the heck any of them are and to need my uh, meter. Now you can also go on the color codes, of course, but they can be difficult to see, and it's good to confirm with something else. Now some of these have fallen off. I don't know whether they're the same. They look the same. Hmm. I'm going to got a fair bit to do. All right, so let's just start off and stick this on to ohms. So that's 32.8, let's call that 33, 33K. These are 10K. Three point three. Okay, I've got 0 0.47 mega. I've got 47K, 470 which I think is what that is. So if it's 0.47K, it'll be 470K, yes. 10 ohm, are we sure? Yep. 1K. 100K. Good, right, I've got some individuals. I don't know whether it's because they've fallen off the group or whether they are something else. That's a 47k. I'm going to need a piece of paper. This is probably the least interesting part of soldering is identifying resistors. You know, if they all just came with proper labels, <laughs> well, they do. I mean, they're color coded. So if I could memorize the color codes, then that would make things easier, I suspect. So if it's 0.2k, it'll just be 200. 200 220 K that's literally nothing <laughs> what does that mean oh it is literally nothing it's one of those strange nothing type um, resistor things oh I'm trying to remember what that was about we definitely had one before and it was an odd thing I can't quite remember. I'm going to have to put that to one side for now because that's that's an oddity. That's 2k. 20k. And this will be 470. Right, so my feeling is on this to do those individual resistors first. Otherwise, I'm going to lose them and they're going to blow away or I'm going to forget what they are something of that nature oh and there's another one there's oh, there's always another one always another one okay okay 330k well why don't i find that one first 330k so looking on our thing here these are going to be tricky to find 330k is that one there now these are a little bit difficult to identify 
you've got to work out which it actually refers to. Now as far as I can see, 330k is going to be this one here. Hmm. It's 120k, that's 240k. Because they've got a ring on, which is where the body goes, and it points to where the leg goes. So if I bend this in the appropriate manner, like so, For this one, in this little array of resistors here, 330K goes in there to there. Let's have a look on here as well. Yeah, that's 330K. It's definitely in that position. So for this, the, the schematic type printout thing is probably going to be useful. So 220k, is that one of these? Yep, it's that one. It's not getting them muddled up. That also sits in this bunch. And it's this bottom one here. I've got 120k, which is this one. And at the top we've got a 33k, which is not one of these at the minute, so I'm going to leave that. So I want the 470 and the 47k. 47k is there. That's this one. It's over on this side, 47k. So 2k. Not finding the 2k at the moment. I might not have read that right. So I've got a 20k, which is over here. A 200, which is down in this bottom corner. 200. And I've got a 470 just here. So let's measure this one again. 1.9k, 2k. Definitely a 2k. 2k 2k over there found it okay good right I'm not going mad that's great bottom left 1k 2k so that's all the individual little ones put in um, I'll put the rest in and solder them and see where we are what I think I'll do I'm gonna do them in batches so I'm gonna solder all of these now because that's a, that's enough for that then I'll put in all of these all of these ones, these extra groups, solder them, and then I'll put in that larger group and solder them. So that's the plan and I'll see you when I'm done.
that is all of those resistors in how cool are they it's a wonderful field of resistors it's like some kind of growth growing out of the board anyway I've discovered where this goes this is like a, a zero <laughs> resistor reasons for this not going to become clear just at the moment but this sits as a zero resistor here R22 bit weird yeah a bit weird does it have to go a particular way around I've no idea <laughs> I don't think so I don't think so but hopefully within the uh, the proper breadboarding of this we may actually find out what it's about but hey it goes in there let's try not to think about it too much Right, next, talking about the transistors. I've got a row of these, these fellas here. These all appear to be 3904s, and we've got to make sure that we put them in the right way around. So you see these transistor bits here 2N3904, 2N3904, 1, 2, 3, 4, way across there. They have to go the right way around. Now you've got three legs on here which are all in line, and on the screen print they're actually offset, so you've just got to poke them in. The important thing is that the flat side goes with the flat side on the PCB. 3904 they all seem to be the same. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Excellent. Excellent. So let's pull one of these out. Which way around does it go? So the middle leg goes forward a little bit. So in here it's going to go like this. Oh, look, it's all set a bit too wide, so you're going to have to squeeze it in there. I almost had it. And try to sort of shuffle it down a little bit. I mean, the the height of these don't really matter uh, too much because you've got other things which are already going to be pretty tall. So you just shuffle that in there as best you can is my advice so let's come together a little bit squeeze then there's one further down here so make sure you just get it around the right way Great, I'll solder those in. Okay, now we have the electrolytic capacitors, which are these two here. So these have to go the right way around. You've got a long leg, which is positive, and on the body you can see that the shorter leg is denoted negative. So we've got a big one here, big one over here, that must be it. Now which way round do they go? You've got a line, the line usually indicates negative. Let's see if it says anything. There's a stripe on the capacitor's body, the positive pad for the capacitor has a square shape and the negative lead should go into the pad next to the notch on the silk screen. So on this occasion the square pad here is positive, that's long, and the notch goes to the negative. <laughs> the uh, strange shape of these legs is not helping at the moment don't quite know why they're like that so long one goes into the square negative one goes into there can i get them through got one through oh dear so maybe a pair of pliers to sort of squash those out might not be a bad idea
long leg positive. That was better. So I've got these big bulky square ones as well, which I think can also go in. Also got to be aware of this. Oh, I've already lost the opportunity to do that well. Never mind. So let's put these big square ones in. These don't appear to have a direction. And are they all the same? 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, yes they all are. Solder those bits in. So the last bit is this annoying power socket, which has to go on. Now you've got this little corner taken out here, and that would indicate that's where the the key on this is going to go that way around. So that drops into there, but unfortunately I should have put this in before these capacitors because turning it over it's just going to fall out. So I need to stick it on something. Just to hold it in place. You can use masking tape, blue tack, anything you like. I'm just going to put it on there press it down do one leg like I did with the uh, IC holders try to get it as flat as possible put that on See that feels good looks good nice and straight no problem let's do the rest a bit chunky that I think it's funny with all those resistors sticking up it does give it a completely different feel completely different aesthetic so next up we are going to be putting the front panel bits and pieces on here and then putting the front panel on and then we're done but I think it'll be a good point at, at this point to go and get some lunch have a break come back to it afresh I had a nice lunch now I'm back to look at the front panel bits and pieces. So for this we're now using this this side of the board and everything's going to sit on here and be soldered on the other side which gives us some, some trouble because there's the potential of melting things with our soldering iron but let's see let's see how we go. So first we're doing the jack sockets which are these fellas and then the pots so these go into the top two bits here and down the bottom and you've got this one leg that sticks out that goes into the bit that's off the square and then you push the other bits in and that should by some kind of force of tension hold that in there more or less ah, it's a quite tight so they're squeezing in there quite well ah, he says and then he's not able to get that one in interesting I think the holes for the sockets are quite small but that does give a nice rather nice fit I've got no complaints there then for the pots are these all the same that's a 500 that's not <laughs> that's a 25 that's the same as that one presumably that's a, a, a 10 and that's an unlabeled so let's go back to our picture so for the pots So that's which way up is that because it's going to change depending on which way round we look at it but if it's looking at it that way around think about it think about it yeah of course so 
we should have I'm gonna find out what they are right okay investigation required okay that's an a500 I can do that one that's the one down the bottom a500 one two three and then the big fat bits I've got a 25 well that's awesome <laughs> there's not a 25 on the list a 100 a 20 another 100 a1m and a 10 we'll leave that one for the minute this has got a label on it this is a 10 this is this one here So I've got a 25, and then I've got three, A105, A104, A104. So I've got two which are the same. So they must be the 100Ks. So I'm going to go for that here. The number I'm reading is the one on the bottom here. See that? A104. This is A105. I'm sure if I should Google that, it would tell me the exact um, value. But I've got two A104s, and so there are two 100Ks. So that's why I'm making that decision. 100K and 100K. So that leaves me either 25 and an A105. So if I Google, so according to here, an A105 pot is one mega ohm, which is going to go bottom right. Now that leaves me with this 25k one that goes into a 20k slot. Now there's not a massive difference between that and that so and it's only one left so I'm just gonna have to go with it have to go with it and just assume that that's alright this is the gain ultimately isn't it I think so maybe it gives me more maybe it gives me less <laughs> I don't know we don't know so that's all in just the switch to do what does it suggest? Don't solder them yet, it says. Okay, fit the front panel. So I'm not doing the switch just yet. You put the front panel over the top, which is always a good idea because it keeps everything straight. Now, I sit slightly high of the knobs. But I don't have any washers or anything to put underneath but it should sit flat with the jacks so what I'm doing is just putting these on to secure the front panel so that I know when I solder it in everything is going to be straight now where are these bits that's the next question Right, so the two knobs are at the top here. Got to be careful not to melt anything. First pot while I'm in this orientation. This is going to use up all the solder on these big lugs.
So I've done one side. I can smell burning from something. What have I set fire to? <laughs> always a worry. It's always a worry. Right, so this other side. Got to squeeze in here. I think that's all in. That's looking all right to me. So now the switch apparently requires special attention. It has two nuts. You've got to leave one of them on. So take the top one off. Screw that down to the bottom and this is going to give the height that it needs. So I'm going to need to take this off. And we do the same. So we stick it on here. And why didn't we do this when I had the whole rest of it on? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I thought there might be something special or different about it, but no. Okay, so we've put the switch in, wobbling about. Uh, make sure we get this the right way up. Squeeze that down. And try to get it to behave. Like so. Now this is not the last time we're going to have to take this off because we've got to put the LEDs on. But let's put this into place like so and solder it in. So finally the LEDs. So again, take the top off. So I've got four greens, two reds. Now it talks about them being the legs being a problem, difficulty in cutting them off. So there should be a certain length. Okay, I can see what they're saying. You see that in there? In order to cut those short, that's going to be troublesome. But do I really need to, is my question. You know, I mean, once they're soldered, does it matter if they're sticking out a little bit? Because what it suggests is cutting them all down to 12 mil and then putting them in. But I think I can cut them short enough as it is without them interfering with each other. So... I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> Just the kind of thing that I do. So let's see what happens where they go. Because the other thing when you cut them off, you got, you're going to lose what the positive and negative is. Because the long leg is positive. There's a flat bit on the LED, which is the negative. But it can be very difficult to see. So I'm going to keep mine in there. So there should be three, one, two, I've got four. Oh, never mind. Three and one, so I must have stolen some from somewhere else. So across this top bit, one, two, three, four. It's going to be green, 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 red. Oh, and there's another red down there. Okay. So with this, the square hole is the positive for the long leg. And the hole that's sort of... Uh, where the the round circle is kind of flattened to go through it. That's the negative So you just put them through you don't bend the legs or solder it just yet Green 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 if you are going to chop the legs off then you need to be absolutely sure which side is which red and then down here another red one like so so fit the front panel again push them through
and solder them. So once that front panel's on, if you push these through, <laughs> so that they come through, obviously. Now, there are schools of thought over how far an LED should come through. In fact, you get some flat topped LEDs that just come flush with the panel. But, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. And then you have to somehow get in there to solder them. Soldering is going to be far more difficult than cutting the legs, I think. I'm not sure how you're going to do it. <laughs> Maybe it's better to solder from the top, but you can't do that because you've got the panel on. Hmm. Tricky, eh? Well, let's see if we can do it. No. <laughs> Is the answer to that. There's one leg. Can't get the angle right for the other one. I have no idea whether that was in or not. Did I solder it? I think so. Good lord. I mean, these should have gone in first. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is not clever at all. So, try it. Look, I've already melted that side there. Let's try and get into there. Where can I present the solder from? I don't know whether it went in the hole. Now what would have worked better would have given me a little bit more room. It would have been if I'd pushed these transistors down further. But because the screen print was much smaller than them, that was actually quite hard to do. I could bend these forward, potentially, didn't quite mean to do it quite that fiercely. Could bend these forward out of the way a little bit. Yeah, not good. Not a not a particularly <laughs> happy design this one. But hey, let's keep at it. Yeah. Right. Well, that's like well tricky. So I'm going to try to cut these down as close as I can. Make sure I'm cutting the right leg. So yeah, some serious trouble in there, I would say. Back into position. Okay, good. Almost done, it says. Put the uh, put the chips in. Now I've got this rather marvelous tool, this thing here, which allows me to straighten the legs of chips. They tend to come a little bit flayed out, which can be troublesome. If you don't have such a tool, you'll just have to lean on the legs a little bit, sort of roll them a little bit on your desk, like this. You have to lean it on one side and just sort of push down so that all the legs go together at once in order to bring them in a little bit. Then all you've got to do is make sure these go the right way around. So you've got the, the nick on the front that goes with that nick there. Drop that in with the straightened legs. Should just go straight in. These two are the same, I think. Yeah. And for them, you're looking for the, the little dot to go at the front there. That's in. That should be that. Now we all have to do is plug it in and make sure there's no smoke. That's the key with this fella. No smoke. We don't want any smoke. Okay, moment of truth. Here's my freshly made compressor. Now this can only go one way around. And the red stripe always goes to minus 12, which is on this side. You can only go one way around because of the key in the power socket. 
So that goes like that. Uh, this isn't on. That is on at the moment. So I'm going to plug this in. And we do what is affectionately known as the smoke test. It means just putting it on here, turning it on to see whether it makes fire. No, we had a little glimmer of something there. Doesn't look like anything bad's going on. <laughs> Let's. Let's just screw it in a little bit. Let's see if we can get some sound. So if I just patch something very quickly here, that should be getting us something. <laughs> so now we want to take that, put it through the compressor See if that sounds or does anything different. And I'll put. That seems to be working. So that's full compression. So now we know it's working, let's have a closer look to see if we can work out how it works. What does it do? Well, I've got a kick drum here that I'm gonna stick in it just to give us the basics. That goes into the audio input. We're getting a nice metering here got input gain so you can mess that about you've also got makeup gain which we'll come to in a minute so you set your input you've then got a threshold or a ratio the threshold is the point the loudness at which it starts to compress and the ratio is by how much so as you bring the ratio up it's starting to squash that kick drum which is why it seems quieter and then you use the makeup gain to bring the level back up again. So it has this effect of squashing the sound and then bringing it back up, which gives this overall sort of flatness, this in your faceness. You can hear the front edge uh, being missed and the rest of it behind it being compressed so you get this transient and then the rest of the kick behind it very easy to overdo it let's try that with a sequence electronic music in this way isn't particularly dynamic if we're using a drum kit or a vocal line or something like that would have a much greater effect with the compressor but as it is we're using something which is quite flat and making it a bit flatter 
But the other special feature that this appears to have is this side chain input. Now you can use that as a way of kind of dragging away the compression to, to nothing. So you've got this compression going on and the side chain steps in and kind of takes it away and then puts it back in again. And you have this, you end up with this throbbing effect, this pulsing effect, which you can use anything going into here, really anything you want to follow that rhythm of, but let's use our kick drum. So we can use the output of our kick drum going straight into there. And as I bring up the ratio, you can then start to hear the way that kick drum is pulling away at the compression. I change the pattern. So there you go, the Moritz Klein and Erica Synths EDU compressor. The first module in a new line of DIY exciting modules that we're going to be able to build and learn and understand and get to grips with right from the breadboard into the circuit diagram into the module. Hope that was helpful. In the meantime, go make some tunes. <laughs>